What's up YouTube? How's it? Jeff Anderson here with One Fish, Two Fish and Christy and I. This is our channel. Uh, so make sure y'all subscribe for weekly fishing adventures. Uh, Christy and I, one of our favorite species to target is actually red drum, redfish, some people call them channel bass, spotted sea bass. I don't care whatever the heck you call it. Red drum is actually Christy and I here at One Fish, Two Fish. This is our favorite species of fish to target. By far the most fun inshore uh, species of fish that fight, in our opinion, pound for pound, some of the best in the mid-Atlantic, anywhere from Florida all the way up to Maryland and the Chesapeake Bay, even Texas. So today I'm gonna teach y'all red drum tactics, how to catch these red drum, everything from fishing out here on the beach to inshore. We're gonna break it down for y'all but red drum are the most fun fish. So today I'm gonna to show you guys why we love fishing them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cue up the pump up music because these red drum are a blast. So let's get right into it. So with drum, you've got three types. You've got bull drum, those are the big, those are the big boys. Typically here in Virginia, North Carolina, we define a bull drum as anything over 40 inches. Then you've got a slot drum, whatever state you're in legally, make sure you check your uh, local state regulations for what the slot is, for what you can keep. And then you've got the puppy drum, which are you know the smaller drum. Whatever it is, drum are an amazing fish to catch. And drum, the first thing we're gonna talk about is where to locate them in our three main areas. We're gonna talk about uh, beach fishing. We're gonna talk about targeting drum inside of inlets in your intercoastal waterways. The third place we're gonna talk about is in the marshes, in the grass flats. Okay, so the first thing that uh, we're gonna talk about is actually the bait or their forage. If you can find that bait, you can find the drum because drum are voracious feeders. These fellas, they ain't coming to shop. They come in to buy. Where you can find the bait, you'll find the drum. And so this right here, this is an inlet that's right on a beach. So this is perfect for us to talk about. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for that moving tide. You know, drum also adhere to structure. Okay, so this right here, this is kind of your standard beach drum fishing rig. Um, this is an 8,000 series pin. We've got plenty of line capacity here. Honestly, you could even fish as low as a five or 6,000 series reel. Make sure that you do have amount of line capacity. You don't have to go crazy with the um, pound test. You know, this is actually 30 pound monofilament test. As long as you're playing your drag right, you'll be able to land these 40 to 50 pound giants from the surf. So this right here is your standard surf rig for the drum. This is 30 pound main line. We've got our slider sinker right here that we would attach an eight ounce pyramid sinker to right here. And then we've got our swivel that's going to our leader that's about five to six inches of 50 pound uh, leader line to a seven knot circle hook. Make sure you use the circle hooks. Do not use J hooks. This is not just for the fish's safety. This is for your hookup ratio. If you're using the circle hook, that drum is gonna hook itself. And then we're gonna talk about the bait. This is a fresh blue crab that I just picked up from the bait store. This is candy to them. This is literally, like you might think, how can they eat this crab? This is their, probably their most favorite bait is blue crabs. All right, so the other beach samurai sword that I would have with me would be, this is a 6,000 pin uh, battle right here. But I'm gonna talk about the bait. This right here is frozen bunker and you really want to go with fresh bunker i just went frozen today because that's all the tackle shop had so for all intents and purposes for this tutorial i only have frozen bunker but if you can get your hands on fresh so let's say you're actually fishing from a boat and you were fishing in a jetty christy and i we love fishing off of jetties this is some footage right here fishing off of wilmington's jetty and we caught some really good sized drum there so as I cut back into what we were using that day, we actually were just using a very basic, these are ball, they call them egg sinkers, and they slide up and down your main line. 
I've got 65 pound braid on here. This is actually about a foot to two feet of leader line. That's okay when you're fishing from a boat. You want the shorter leader line when you're casting from the beach. A lot of people, you'll see them fishing with heavers from the beach and those conventional surf rods. That's great. And you'll see their leaders sometimes are only one to two inches off of their weight. So don't worry as much about the length of your leader line. You want to worry more about the bait because that's exactly all that the drum are concerned about. So if you're fishing, let's say I was fishing right here in a boat off the end of this jetty, then I would be using this right here, probably just this five to eight ounce egg sinker. And then I'd have some fresh cut bait on the end of that with a six, seven or eight aught circle hook right there. So if you're fishing from the beach, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna really look for some of those sloughs where you have like shallow water and uh, deep water. And the way that you can do that is you can look at the way that the waves are breaking. Where the waves are gonna break and you've got a lot of white water, that's shallow. If those waves are cresting, but they're not actually breaking, that's more of like the channel and the deep area. So you wanna either fish the edge of that or you want to fish in that deeper area so you might want to try casting you know one pole into that more turbulent area and then one pole into that deeper slough into that deeper channel but what the drum are going to do is they are literally digging in the sand for crabs and bait and and so when you're fishing off of the beach you know when you have a tide change or you are fishing an incoming tide that's gonna be killer for getting on these drum. You, you will be surprised how these massive drum will literally chase bait right up to the beach. So anywhere from 25, 30, 40, 50 yards. And then if you had a second pole, I'd recommend hugging that thing out as far as you can past the breakers. So the jetties act as a conveyor belt. So you wanna fish really like the ends of the jetties where you have the current that's flushing the bait out so where you have that outgoing tide that's ripping out, that's gonna be one of the tides that you're gonna be looking for to catch those drum. Honestly, you can catch drum from jetties any tide, but the drum will feed heavily, most heavy, in a moving tide, in a fast moving tide. The best depths that you're gonna look for when fishing jetties off the end, typically between eight to 30 feet is what you wanna look for. You'll be able to catch the drum right off of the jetty, but the big, big drum, the bull drum, those are typically gonna be in about eight to 30 feet. All right, y'all, so the second place that we're gonna talk about is a lot of your inshore, like intercoastal waterways. And um, this is awesome. This is like saltwater largemouth bass fishing. You're working docks, bridges, uh, rock ledges, and you know a lot of stuff like that. And you're gonna be using some light action tackle. This is a Pen 4000 with a Shimano seven foot rod. I've got 15 pound braid. This is my popping cork rod right here. And I've got a 15 pound mono leader. Drum, puppy drum will actually uh, stay in these areas until they get to that about 30 inches or three years old. So the drum will stay here all year round. They will winter here. They're a little bit tougher to catch in the winter, but they're still there to be caught. Um, so here in these areas, you're gonna, you know, again, just look for docks. You're gonna look for that structure. Still, that moving current is very important. Another thing that you're gonna look for in these areas, if you can go to the backs of these in the cooler months, um, when you get a nice warm uh, kind of early spring days, similar to this, uh, when you get that really low tide, that sun's gonna just bake the, um, the uh, mud, it's uh, gonna like, you know, sit there and bake even some of these rocks right here. So when that tide rises back up, uh, those drum are actually gonna adhere to some of that warmer water. So those are some of the areas that you wanna look for the drum in these types of waters. Um, if you're just brand new to drum fishing, this might be a great place for you to start. You can even catch drum off of your standard bottom rig or even like a high-low rig that you can buy at the tackle shop and blood worms. So um, here, some of our favorite areas to target these drum, uh, Berkeley Gulp. I would recommend watching Christy and I's tutorial on how to fish a Berkeley Gulp. Uh, this is a nuclear chicken jerk shad, and this is, whether I'm fishing it under a popping cork or I'm just fishing it down to a jig head, this is actually gonna be one of my favorite uh, lures that I'm going to use. Um, the, another favorite that I would use is a shrimp. 
Um, and the shrimp, again, you can use it under a popping cork or you can use it just right to the main jig head. Um, don't get discouraged if you're getting broke off against rocks or structure, that's okay. That just means that you're um, you know, really around that cover where the drum and the puppy drum are gonna adhere to. So some of the last things is you also wanna look for uh, breaks in the current. Uh, so right here, we've got you know, current coming in from the ocean um, and it empties out here into this uh, inlet. So you're still gonna have, you know, that, that current is just the conveyor belt that's just flushing some of the bait. It's also flushing that zooplankton, which the bait are following. So look for current look and you're going to be casting up against docks and structure and uh, rocks and anywhere where you can find uh, good quality structure is where you're going to find those puppy drum. All right y'all so this is uh, probably my favorite area to target drum because this is really where it's like you're hunting for the drum and these are the grass flats these are the marsh areas. Summertime these are excellent places early in the morning or in the evening where you're going to throw some topwater baits. I'm going to show you guys some pictures right now. Leave a link in the description below of some baits that I'm going to use. Um, these are going to be ones that are going to resemble like a mullet or a um, you know just bait fish uh, walking across the top of the surface. So you want to try those early in the morning and in the evening. Some of my most favorite lures to throw, of course, the popping cork. Um, on the jerk shad, I'm gonna throw the popping cork uh, really with a shrimp. That'd probably be my favorite um, lure to throw in the grass flats for the drum. Uh, but again, what I'm gonna look for is I'm gonna look for on an outgoing tide, I'm gonna look for some of the creek mouse, a lot of the estuaries, oyster beds, you know, you're still keeping an eye out for birds. You're gonna be keeping an eye out for any, you know, bait fish, any kind of swirls of bait fish, you know, things of that nature. But here in the grass flats, you're gonna to wanna to be a little bit more attuned to what is around you. If you start seeing, you'll even see what they call tailing drum. And that's where those drum are literally, you know, they're in such skinny water that you can see their tail sticking out of the water. So where you see that, you wanna cast five feet past, five feet ahead of that tail. Uh, and then you're gonna work your bait, probably just two twitches of the rod and just hang on for dear life. Some of the structure that you're gonna look for is actually just grass flats themselves. Um, that's where the drum are gonna come in. And um, one other really good tip, if a lot of times when Christy and I, and we're walking out and we're wade fishing in areas like this, and we start seeing crabs all around us where we're walking around, stop right there and start casting. Cause I'll guarantee you that there's drum all around. All right, so the second bait that I'm gonna throw, uh, and the second setup that I would have with me. So I would probably have like a popping cork because when you're fishing these grass flats, um, your bait is gonna get hung up in the grass. Uh, so if you have like a weedless uh, some people like in Texas, the, I know the weedless spoons are really big. Um, this is a bait that's really popular in the Florida, like Stewart area, Fort Pierce. And this is a, um, this is a shrimp. Um, and it's actually this really cool type of hook. I know these are pretty common, but this hook right here tends to work the best for weedless. Um, this is either, I think this is a 1 16th ounce uh, weight, you know, similar like a Texas rig. And this right here is deadly when you're fishing grass flats. Um, we will do much more drum fishing tutorials and also a lot more just fishing tutorials in general. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this one. If y'all have any questions or comments, then uh, drop us a line down below. Thanks for watching and peace out.